but you can be guaranteed this never gets old. Someone said, did you see this kid down in Timbits? So I went out and saw him on the ice, and when they said he was two and three years younger than everyone else, I was like, you gotta be kidding. He was that good. You knew there was something there, and as he started to mature and kind of become a, even a teenager, a little bit of a man, he just went leaps and bounds above everyone. It's been very nice to see him have the success he has at the level he has, and to be the same person all along at the same time. Nice shot. What a shot that was, huh? Nice tip. Two for two. Nice save. Geez, it would have been, I think I was six, he was five years old. We were playing Timbits hockey here at the Coal Harbor Place, and he was a year or two younger than most out there, and we ended up on the same team, and I turned into a goalie my first year after Timbits. They needed goalies, and I jumped in there, and I like to think I gave Sid a lot of confidence over the years. There's a reason he shoots five-hole, I think, a lot now. From the time I was little, I always looked up to him, and I think he really was my best friend when I was growing up, and to have him leave when I was so young, it was definitely very emotional. Did you sign a helmet? Yeah. Saw your autograph on it. I know what that autograph might do. Huh? <laughs> I always said that he was going to be a protective brother, and he still is, but as I've gotten older, I think that he's become more of my friend. Not that we were ever not friends, but more so that, you know, if I need anything or if I need to talk to him about something that I know I can always call him. He's always going to be that big brother that I can turn to. I remember a buddy of mine said, I just heard about this kid down in Cole Harbor. He said, he's going to be the next one. He said, he's, I said, how old is he? He said, eight. <laughs> and I'm going, really? It was fantastic. We all rally behind Sydney and what he does for the community. Not only is he an amazing hockey player, but you know how he carries himself off the ice. It's tough to find good role models for these guys, and just what he does in the community. Like for him to take a week of his summer, he could be anywhere in the world. He's here back in his community and spending some time with the kids and putting them onto the path, hopefully that you know he's on right now. He's just willing to help any kids that are sick. We always heard of this little kid who was out just working the ice, so we'd always try and watch him before our games. It was pretty cool, so we finally got to play some pond hockey when he was about seven or eight. I got to see what he's all about. He was the only guy wearing a helmet with a cage, but it was, uh, it was pretty good. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> Looking back, when you see some of the videos of when he was younger and you kind of remember playing with him at that age, I was on his team when he would score 100 goals or whatever, but at the time, you're not really paying attention to it, I guess. But he always had a step on everybody. We said it jokingly, but we weren't joking. Offensively, you almost couldn't coach him at Pee Wee because he saw things that you didn't see. You might teach him some things, but what he could see during the live play was different than what other kids you couldn't, and you didn't want to restrict someone like that. It's fun to watch. From the time we were six, seven, I just remember summertime coming around and we'd be done school for the year and most kids like to sleep in. I could always remember I was one of those kids that loved to sleep and the phone would be ringing 8.30, it'd be ringing 9.30 and I could just hear my mom kind of faintly in the background saying, no, he's still sleeping, Sydney. he's still sleeping. Sure enough, the guy just wanted to get up and he just wanted to get on the rollerblades and meet somewhere to play road hockey. He just he was always looking to set up a game. We did play pretty much every day. I always seemed to pick him as my goalie or try and get him. I don't know if I knew something that the other kids didn't know, but if I had him in, in my net, I knew I had a better chance of winning. It says a lot, I think. He's just as down to earth as he's ever been. Still takes his shoes off when he walks in your house, things like that. I think he just feels comfortable being around the people he grew up with. And I mean, we treat him the same. and We give him the gears if we have to, and he gives us the gears. And it's pretty cool to see him come back, share things with his community, especially what he does for a lot of the, the kids around all year round. It's not just when he comes home for his camp, but he does a lot around here too. So it's pretty cool. That's it. Crosby! 
if anyone ever asks a question about him, all you can say is good things. He has you know, good values, comes from a great family, and that rubs off you know, of him and then everyone else kind of gathers around him and supports him with that. He's a special person, there's no doubt about it. He'll never forget where he came from and he, he looks forward to getting home every summer. Is there something you want to say to the people of Coal Arbor? Just thank you. Um, thank you for your support. Um, thank you. It's a special place. I'm proud to come back here. And thank you very much.